Hi everyone, I'm Benjamin Yang. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. For those of you who are new to this channel, I make videos based on my experience as a biology tutor. And I hope that my videos will help you whether you're a current student, soon to be, or if you're here just for the fun of it. Without further delay, let's get on with today's video. This video is the first of a series where I'm going to talk about the products behind some biotech companies. I realize that many people find it very difficult to try to understand what exactly these companies are trying to do. As such, I'll try to simplify the biology so that you can understand what's going on. I'll start off with the company with the ticker symbol as you can see here and the video will be divided into four parts. First, the biological background needed to understand this company's products. Second, a description of what the products will do. Third, how do the products fit into the bigger scheme of things. And finally, fourth, what is the potential in the future to come. Since there are so many things to cover, the last two parts will be discussed in the follow-up video. Watch out for it. Before we proceed, please let me know in the comment section below which other biotech companies you would like me to cover in the future. And with that, let's dive right in. Living organisms comprise of cells and these cells are divided into prokaryotes and eukaryotes. We have eukaryotic cells and are more complex and bacteria are prokaryotes and their cells are comparatively simpler. Humans routinely fan off foreign organisms using our immune system. So the question is, do bacteria need such a system? The answer is surprisingly, yes, they do. They have to fend themselves from viruses that specifically infect and kill bacteria. However, since they are much simpler compared to humans, they are not able to mount an immune response like humans. Instead, they evolve simple mechanisms like enzymes which can recognize and destroy invading viruses. Since there are many types of bacteria, different bacteria evolved different enzymes which can recognize and destroy different viruses. We group all bacterial enzymes based on how they work into two main groups. First, restriction enzymes and second, CRISPR Cas enzymes. The latter is the one which we are interested in and which will be discussed a little later. Now, let's skip over to humans. As mentioned earlier, we are complex organisms comprising of eukaryotic cells. Each cell comprises of 46 chromosomes and each chromosome comprises of DNA and disseminated throughout this DNA are genes, also known as the smallest units of inheritance, meaning it can be passed down from parent to the next generation. These genes each comprise of a unique sequence of nucleotides, either A, C, G or T. This is likened to English words which are made up of the alphabets. Different alphabets come together to form different words. So, different nucleotide sequences come together to form different genes. And each of these genes have important functions in order to maintain life and give rise to you. Now, remember when you were a kid learning English and your teacher teaching you how to spell? Yes, during those times. And remember that you made mistakes back then and learned the correct versions of it. Likewise, genetic sequences are definite and should remain intact. Slight deviations of it will result in potentially a loss of gene function, which in turn can result in a genetic disease. The question is when and why does slight deviations arise? These deviations arise when the cell undergoes cell division. Remember that some of your cells are lost such as skin. And existing cells need to undergo cell division to replace the cells that are lost. In order to do so, the genetic material must be replicated and it is during this time that deviation in gene sequences arise. Why do they arise? Let me ask you a question. Have you observed yourself typing a message lately? How many times do you mistype as you create messages to send off to friend or family? 
The same thing occurs in cells. There is an enzyme called DNA polymerase that replicates new genetic material. However, this is not always accurate and will result in a slight deviation from the original, which as mentioned earlier, when it occurs, leads to genetic diseases. One such example is sickle cell anemia, which is a mutation of the sequence from GAG to GTG in a beta globin gene that produces a subunit to form hemoglobin in red blood cells. This molecule is very important since it transports oxygen and carbon dioxide. Such a mutation means that the person has reduced functionality and can lead to a life of pain and suffering and every so often require blood transfusion. Now you must be wondering how is it that the bacteria fighting viruses is connected to human genetic disease? The key lies in the ways bacteria fight foreign viruses that we mentioned earlier, the CRISPR-Cas enzyme system. So how does it work? This multi-component enzyme complex consists of two components, a DNA cutting protein called Cas9 and a guide RNA molecule. They function hand in hand as we shall see. Since the bacteria Cas9 does not want its own DNA to be cut, it needs to recognize what to cut instead. And the guide RNA performs this role. It is believed that the RNA sequence is a remnant of synthesis of new virus genomes that eventually allowed the bacteria to evolve a mechanism of recognition so that Cas9 can be targeted specifically to the viral genome as they invade bacteria. The thinking is that if we can change the guide RNA sequence to recognize human genome instead, then we have just created a pair of molecular scissors that can cut away parts of the mutated human genetic sequences that results in disease. Let me explain this process in further detail. When the guide RNA, for example, is engineered to be complementary to a human gene sequence, it will bind to, unwind the DNA sequence, which is double-stranded, and preferentially bind to the single-stranded DNA. Once done, this props up the two DNA strands so that the active site of Cas9 enzyme can make a specific cut in each strand. Once the cut occurs, the human cellular process tries to repair the double-stranded break. However, repairing double-stranded breaks is much harder than single-stranded breaks in DNA. So errors arise. This error is hoped to be able to inactivate the gene in sequence and therefore shutting down the expression. If, for example, the original gene that is mutated results in an abnormal protein, at least now it is not produced. In this case, the remediation is not complete since the original mutation is still there and now we are adding additional mutations. So it's now time to talk about how Beam Therapeutics, the company, come in. Beam Therapeutics was founded in January of 2017 and based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I first took notice of the company when I was watching a TED video given by one of the founders, Professor David Liu, hailing from Harvard. The company went public in February of 2020 this year, meaning they offered stocks for public purchase via the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol BEAM. Let me be upfront, I actually own two small positions in this company. First position at $25 and second position at $23. 
Let me make this clear. In no way am I a financial advisor or am I advising you to invest in this company. In fact, I'm only presenting the science behind the products. I'm not going to talk about the business, neither am I going to talk about how the business is run. With that understanding, let's continue. The scientists at Beam Therapeutics try to solve the problem by thinking about whether they can modify the CRISPR-Cas9 system so that they can restore back the original base. If they can do that, they will then be able to differentiate themselves from the rest of the companies using the CRISPR technology. As you might have guessed, they were able to do it. Here's how they tackled the problem. They first started by removing the two enzyme domains on Cas9 that cuts the DNA strand and replaced them with another enzyme domain they found in another organism. One of these domains is able to chemically modify the C base with T instead. The other domain is able to induce a cut in such a way that signals a repair mechanism of the particular strand without affecting the modified strand. From there, they made another hybrid, Cas9, replacing the modifying enzyme domain with one that can modify A base to G. Of all point mutations that result in genetic disease, 14% of them can be treated theoretically by modifying the C base to T. And 48% of them from A base to G. This is a significant breakthrough. Firstly, because of the number of genetic diseases that can be targeted. And secondly, because there are no natural systems that can be borrowed and they have to artificially engineer such an enzyme domain to convert A base to G. This is referred to as CRISPR version 2 and is considered superior because of the unprecedented ability to not only target mutations in human genes but also to correct them back to the functional original. Once corrected, this can be potentially used to cure genetic diseases that were once incurable. And with that, we have come to the end of this video. In the next video, I'm going to talk about what are some of the genetic diseases that can be targeted and why is this technology superior? Watch out for it. If you like what I've discussed, could you please target the like button below and convert it from a grey to a blue colour. Thank you so much. And with that, you've been awesome and I'm Benjamin Young. See you in the next video.